The first item on the agenda um, is a statement, um, a proposed statement about George Floyd's death and the impact it has had um, on uh, the country and um, uh, our communities. Um, and I hope I, 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 um, I should be blamed for it. I drafted it and um, Aaron Armstrong um, suggested edits and it's definitely a proposal. And so um, uh, I'd like to discuss it. Um, and I'd like to keep in mind, of course, that um, um, it may be a little bit unwieldy to edit it um, greatly here, but if we could have a, a sort of directional discussion about it, um, I think that would be great. And I will read it for um, the benefit of those listening. Uh, so this is a proposal. It hasn't been um, approved by the board yet. The BART Police Department Citizen Review Board denounces in the strongest possible terms the needless and tragic murder of George Floyd and hereby affirms that his life and all black lives matter. Mr. Floyd's death has understandably deepened public distrust in law enforcement around the country, including in the communities that our members represent. The BART Police Department Citizen Review Board was created after the death of Oscar Grant as part of a system of civilian oversight that, quote, promotes integrity and encourages systemic change and improvement in the police services that BART provides to the public. Although the BART Police Department has made many significant reforms since Mr. Grant's death, we have the duty to continue to advocate for greater change and improvement. We hear the call from our communities for dramatic changes to policing, and we as a board commit to explore and advocate for structural changes to the way public safety is guaranteed throughout the BART system. We welcome and encourage public participation and input, as well as collaboration with other stakeholders at BART in this process. We reaffirm our commitment to this moment in memory of Mr. Floyd and Mr. Grant. Um, does anybody want to speak on it? Mr. Chair, this is Aaron Armstrong, Vice Chair, uh, member at large for the CRB. Um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to uh, provide my input on this document, uh, which I believe is a, a potentially very powerful statement from the CRB uh, that draws a very clear through line from the event that spurred our formation to the moment that we find ourselves in today. Uh, so I, I do hope that we're able to pass this unanimously as a board today. Um, I would like to make a motion that uh, this is Les Mensinger District 6. I would like to make a motion that we accept this letter and uh, approve it. Darren White, I'd like to second that. Very good, Mr. Chair. If we're going to have some discussion, this is Zach Bruno. Uh, and just a couple of ideas for amendments before we take a full vote. Sure. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I do look forward to voting affirmatively ultimately this afternoon. I think it's altogether right and appropriate that this body um, take this uh, take this action. However, I, I do wonder about a couple of items. Number one, um, the use of the term murder, although we may agree that it appears to be a murderous act that caused the death of Mr. Floyd. We do also know that the charges are currently pending and uh, there has not been a, a trial or a conviction. So I, we do certainly want to express that it wasn't just a death. So perhaps uh, the term killing might be uh, more prudent and um, uh, maybe we could discuss that, and then I had one other idea as well. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I understand your concerns about the word murder. It has been charged as a murder. Um, I, I think we've all seen most of the evidence. I feel comfortable with murder. Um, I, I think killing um, 
it is also accurate. Um, what do other people think? This is Darren White. Um, murder, I feel, is um, the right and prudent word. I do believe he's charged with, um, I believe, second degree murder. So um, I would uh, greatly hope that we can keep that in. Yeah, Ken Liu, District 1. Um, so I'm not an attorney here, but when we use the term murder in a letter like this, uh, my question would be, uh, first of all, I, I know we, we are going to pass a letter uh, today. My question is, when we use the word murder versus the word killing, can we convey the same thing without taking the legal stance? Because when we use the word murder, it sounds like we've already convicted him prior to standing trial. Can this is a representative Gomez? Can I speak real quick? Yeah. So I want us to keep the word murder. I believe, first of all, we are not a court of law. We are not going to prosecute him. That is not our responsibility. I believe that keeping the word murder um, in itself is a statement that we are denouncing the behavior that those officers had taken that day and that we agree that those behaviors should have never led to the death of George Floyd. And I think murder is an appropriate statement. It is a strong statement. I'm voting to keep it. What do other people think? Does anybody else want to speak on this issue? I'm chair, um, um, member Perez Velez, District 9. Um, I, I, I hear, I think that perhaps um, we could keep the language as an amendment referred to legal for their interpretation for possible liability to BART. Behavior and action is not the same thing as an end result. Um, so we just have to be careful um, because there hasn't been um, education of the case and the charges, whether this creates any liability to BART. I am in favor of the word murder. But as a practical matter, perhaps as an amendment, it could be referred um, to legal in BART for, um, for, for possible um, concern on their part. Um, we are an entity of BART. Um, BART has not made a statement calling this a murder. Obviously, we know what we believe in, but I think it might be proper to, um, to add that. Uh, Ken Liu, District 1. Um, so I know that there were two autopsies that are pretty much public knowledge right now, both of which have used the term homicide. Um, again, it's, there are very strong words we can use. I just kind of feel like there's a, uh, we've already passed conviction with the word murder prior to a jury actually convicting the second degree charges. So is there a strong word we can use and get everyone on the same page um, that, you know, won't lessen the letter at all, but still have very strong feelings? Zach Bruno from BPOA. Yeah, I, I, uh, <laughs> I'm in the unfortunate position of like trying to water down a statement which we all do want to be kind of strong and, and I don't wish for it to be watered down. I wish for it to be strong. Uh, my only reason for bringing it up, as Mr. Liu pointed out, was just uh, that it could potentially be viewed or read as, uh, yeah, the presumption of guilt, which as we know in our country is uh, something that, that we don't, um, that we don't do and it's not lawful. Um, I, I do, of course, look forward, as I mentioned, to to you know, getting this statement out, and I wonder if at a later date, when uh, when the killer is ultimately, I believe, I mean, he he will be convicted at some point, and whenever that date does occur, then we could put out another statement at that <clears> time. <throat> and once he's been convicted of murder by a jury of his peers, then um, we could certainly at that stage use the term murder or murderer. Uh, so anyway, I, I didn't mean to. To throw a wrench in things, but uh, it was just something that that I wanted to make sure we all considered because we want to be just here. 
Yeah, so this is Aaron Armstrong, member at large. Uh, I want to jump in. I want to thank everyone for the thoughtful conversation uh, around um, the wording here. Um, in my, uh, when I did have the opportunity to review and edit, uh, this was one of the edits that I made uh, intentionally using the word murder. Uh, it was an intentional calling of the act of what it is. Um, I hear the concerns around liability. Um, trust me, I, I work for my day job in the government and we're very concerned about that kind of stuff, so I hear it. Um, but we're not calling this first degree murder. We're not calling this second degree murder. We're not calling it third degree murder. We're not calling it any specific charge. We're calling it what it is, is it's murder. It was the killing of another person. Uh, and, you know, we can use whatever synonym we want, but, uh, you know, we can go back and change it later if we want. But we're all in agreement, I think, uh, that it was murder, both of, in both cases. Uh, so I, 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 would not vote to, uh, I would not vote to support watering that language down in this specific case. Pete, Pete Longmire. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um, you know, I murder is a strong word. Um, you know, some of us may believe that's exactly what it is. Uh, I get that. I think that we can get to where we want to get to with just a little wordsmithing and leave the word murder in. The thing that I want to be very, very careful of is, you know, who are we and what do we do? We are a deliberate body. We are a fact-finding body. So for us to say murder, I mean, I have to agree with my, you know, colleague, Mr. Liu. Um, I think we can use the word murder, maybe if we kind of twist it in just a little way to where uh, you take that sentence, the needless and tragic death of George Floyd, who has been charged with murder. I think we're still using the word we are, as a matter of fact, we're not saying that, you know, we're not convicting this guy already. Does that, does that make sense? William White, District 3. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, the word smithing of that particular uh, sentence, I think, uh, is um, needed. Um, in the very beginning, I heard the phrase murderous act. Um, and I think that using that phrase within the context of that, that particular paragraph uh, uh, would make a statement uh, that would be satisfactory. For example, um, the uh, tragic murderous act that took the life of George Floyd. Uh, that should um, should satisfy all concerned. Mr. Bruno, what do you and Mr. Liu, how do you feel about something like that? Oh, no, an alternative. Here's another alternative. Um, the needless and outrageous killing of George Floyd. I mean, that's pretty pretty clear. I, I'm sympathetic to people who want to use the word murder because of the force that it has in the the meaning of it. Um, I think I think this is all. I agree with um, Aaron Armstrong that uh, we are all basically the same point. What we're talking about is the intentional killing of another person, um, or the killing the you know the unlawful killing of another person. Um, so a, a murderous act or um, an outrageous killing is that is either one uh, move either side obviously yes. <clears throat> obviously i'd like to move this along so we can get to the main conversation well, of course thank you mr chair this is zach Bruno again from bpoa uh, i think those are excellent uh, options that mr longmire and mr white offered and that you mr. chair offered as well i'd be happy with any of those um, something to the effect of uh, this needless and outrageous killing perpetrated by a killer who has been charged with murder. I, I know it gets wordy, but um, 
uh, yeah, to leave the word murder in there, I, I understand and I agree uh, that there could be some benefit and value to that. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate all three of those suggestions, and I'd entertain a motion on, on either of them, and I'd be happy to second it. Hello. Uh, Mark <laughs> Singer, District oh. 6. Um, the, could we use, um, okay, how about the, instead of murder killing, um, we, again, the man has been charged with, we don't know, first degree, second degree, murder but he hasn't been tried but could we opposite uh, I I feel that we should vote on the way it's written pending uh, legal uh, of where we uh, where uh, if it's legal and uh, it would not put Bart in any uh, position but approve the letter pending on legal at uh, Bart looking at the letter and then we could come back and use the word killing or or something like that. How about that? Just um, a point of order, because we did have a motion and a second on the floor yeah. as well. I know. Um, let me hear from Darren White, who I think was trying to speak. Um, yes, uh, Les, I, I like your idea, and I think uh, Mr. Lou said the same thing, or someone did. I would I would like to keep the word murder in, run it by legal, and see what they have to say. But I do believe, if I'm not wrong, that Chairperson Risk is an attorney, and he wrote the letter. And I'm pretty sure he's more um, um, up to speed on the laws or what should be or could be said. And so I definitely want to keep that murder in. And you know, I want to, I want to say this, and I'm going to be very direct. Um, what y'all scared of? Just like the police. What, what y'all scared of? I mean, I, I, as a black man, what makes me so scary that y'all got that they want to kill kill somebody that look like me? So let's let's keep murder in, keep it how it is, and you know, and let's just deal with it. Let 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 the chips fall where they fall, and that. And I'll, I'll digress. Uh, Chair Risk, William White, District 3. Um, the question is, uh, who is this letter going to and when will it be going out? Does it really matter? Um, this is uh, David Risk. So um, it's it's just going out as a public statement. It'll go out on the website. Um, on the, the questions about what legal effect it would have, on, uh, if any, on us, um, I don't think, I mean, this is just my personal opinion based on my experience in the law, but I don't think it's going to have any impact on us. It could, um, the concern that's been raised, which I think is understandable on some level, is that um, calling it a murder seems to be a specific legal conclusion. And since this is a body that is supposed to hear evidence and then make determinations. It seems like a little bit of prejudgment. Um, and we're weighing that against um, the force that the word murder has. Um, yeah. So I don't think it, it puts us, I, I would be shocked if the general counsel's office had any concerns about it other than the sort of institutional thing that I just raised. Um, I'm, uh, I am fine with either outrageous killing or murder. Um, there is a there is a motion that's been seconded on the floor. So um, in, unless it's withdrawn for the current, um, well, we have one other issue. I'm sorry, um, Zach Zach Bruno has another issue with the, the the statement. What's the second one? Sure, that's right. I, I think maybe the best way would just be to give an intervening motion for an amendment to change the word murder to uh, outrageous killing. And then if there's a second for that, then we can vote on that and see how that goes and then go back to the, the initial motion. Um, um, chair, uh, chair, if I may jump in, chair, if I may jump in, let me let me finish Les, let me finish here. There was a there was a motion on the floor. A substitute motion has been made. That motion takes precedent of the original motion. It has to be voted on. If Mr. Bruno wants to withdraw that motion and do a separate motion, such a motion, 
with both changes that would apply. But right now we have a motion on the floor that takes place of the first motion. That needs to be addressed or withdrawn. So we cannot continue to make motions to make substitute motions on top of substitute motions. So we got either vote on one or the other one or withdraw it. Um, I consider that a friendly amendment and <laughs> I will not accept West Mensinger District 6. Precisely. Maybe that's what I meant to say, a friendly amendment. Um, Les, do you accept the friendly amendment? I didn't. Uh, Les, uh, I did not accept the friendly amendment. Oh, I see. So okay. I want the motion as uh, stated. Okay. Um, can I get a point of clarification, Chair? Just, just, just clarification. Sure. Les Mensinger made the first motion. I believe Member Bruno made the second motion. Who seconded the second motion? I think that's right. No second so, provided for the second motion, the subsequent motion made by Member Bruno. It needs yeah. to be seconded. That's right. So or somebody go has back to, to the original motion. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So uh, is there is there a second? There was I'll, a second. Can we district one? I'll, I'll make a motion to extend discussion. I, I don't want to do that. Do that. I think we need to reach. I think we need to reach resolution on this. So, is there a second for um, the amendment that we're discussing? That we're discussing. Uh, Strike for the point of clarification. What was the exact wording of uh, Member Bruno's amendment? Motion. Replace the term with outrageous killing. So it's replace the term murder with outrageous killing. Is there a um, second? I'll, I'll second that. OK. Um, so now um, we're going to do a vote on the subsequent motion by roll call. Is that correct, Member Perez-Velez? Do we need that, a public right. comment uh, before we vote? When, when, when you have a substitute motion, um, um, it, it is open for discussion. Um, but the first motion is it's, 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 um, it's on hold or tabled until resolution happens on the second motion. Yeah, so let's, I, I, I think we should, I think we've discussed it adequately. We have lots more to discuss than this word. Um, so let's, let's hold the roll call vote on, on Bruno's um, motion. Go ahead, Meg. You ready for the roll call? Yes. Okay. Member Armstrong. No. Member Bruno. Yes. Member Gomez. No. Member Longmire. Star is, six, member Longmire. Is he muted? No, I'm here. What is your no. vote? Okay. Member Lou. Yes. Member Mensinger. No. Member Perez Velez. No. Member Riss? No. Member White? Darren White? No. Emphatically, no. Member William White? No. And the subsequent motion fails. Okay. Is there another issue? Eight no's, two yeses. Now we Thank go back to the original motion, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Sure. Is that the second issue, Zach Bruno. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Zach Bruno, PPOA, PMP. I wonder if we might then, if we're not going to say outrageous killing, if we might say alleged murder or keep the word murder in there. But I do feel uh, it would be great if we can get to consensus and uh, unanimity. I, I desire that very greatly. But at the moment, I'm just not comfortable voting yes on. The, the wording as it is. So uh, okay, I know but we, but we just voted on that. We just voted on that and it was an overwhelming. It was nine to two or eight to two or something like that. So we need to move on. So what's the second issue? Sure, I, I recognize I'm wondering if there might still be a, a tweak that we could make that wasn't outrageous killing, but to still keep the word murder in the statement um, as as Mr. Longmire or as Mr. White had indicated. 
So I would make a motion to change from calling it a murder to uh, some sort of description that would indicate that it was an alleged murder or that it is um, done by a, a person who has been charged with murder or something of that. Chair Risk, if I, I'm not going to second this motion, but I think if I may, there was there was no, a mention of the word murder as an act, and there's also the possibility of using murder as charge. Um, I mean, but either either way, you cannot supply a motion with ambivalent um, action. You have to supply language, or we have to move on. And I agree with that. So if you can state your if you can state your motion now. We'll hold one more vote, but then I want to move on to this issue. We have too much else to discuss. Very good. Uh, then the motion would, would read like this. I move that we include the words after changing. <laughs> Let me start again. Strike the word <laughs> murder and replace with killing and add an additional a positive clause stating quote, with murder being charged against the assailant, end quote. Okay, is there a second? Uh, hey, Ken Lee, District 1. Mm -hmm. uh, before I do that, can I ask one question? Sure. Can, after this letter is approved by this board, will it definitively go through BART Legal Counsel? No, there's no reason it needs to go through BART Legal Counsel. There's just absolutely no reason. And I mean, we don't, when we say things, we're, we're an advisory board. We're not speaking for the BART Board of Directors. We don't, even if we were legally wrong that it was murder, even if he's acquitted, what, like, what are they going to do? Sue us for libel? I mean, it's an, it's not intent, it's not intentional. This is a matter of public interest. It's absolutely First Amendment. Effective speech. So is there a second? Otherwise, we're going to move on. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, this is Pete Longmire, District 2. I will I will second um, the motion. That the motion. Have okay, let's have a roll call vote again. Mag? Okay. Hey, yeah. Can you hear me on this right now? Yes. Hello? Oh, hi. I just want to introduce myself. I'm Janice Lee. I'm on the BART board. Just letting you know that I just joined the call about eight minutes ago. Thank okay. you, Janice. Thank We're you. Gonna we, do are, yeah, we are at, for directors. Okay, we are at our capacity of four board members at this meeting. We're going to do a roll call vote for the subsequent motion number two, made by Member Bruno. Member Armstrong. No. Member Bruno. Yes. Member Gomez. Member Gomez, waiting for her to unmute. Christina, we can't hear you. And I think she's frozen. Oh, there she goes. Member Gomez, oh, let me see if I can unmute her. A moment. Sorry. My apologies, my okay. internet. Okay. No, my vote is no. Okay, thank you. Member Longmire. Yes. Member Lou. Yes. Member Mensinger. No. Member Perez Velez. No. Member Risk. No. Member D. Member White. D. White. No. Member William White. No. The motion fails. Okay, Mr. Bruno, uh, the second issue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. In in interest of moving on, I'll I'll leave the second issue out, and we'll, we'll just vote if it's all right with you on the motion as it stands. I appreciate that, and I, I appreciate your raising concerns about it. I'm glad that we can have another discussion about the issue, and I I sympathize to some degree. With your concerns. Okay, can we do a vote on the statement? Uh, an yes. vote. 
We're going to go back to the original motion, uh, moved by Member Mensinger and seconded by Darren White. Member Armstrong. Yes. Member Bruno. No. no. Member Gomez. Yes. Member Longmire. Yes. Member Lou. Abstain. Member Mensinger. Yes. Member Perez Velez. Yes. Member Riss. Yes. Member Darren White. Yes. Member William White. Yes. The, the original motion passes. Great. Okay, so we will finalize that and get it out. Um, I appreciate the discussion. Um, the next agenda item is just an open discussion regarding the death of uh, Mr. Floyd. Um, and I want to um, I want to open the floor um, to everybody um, to speak on the board. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak first. Um, I don't. I don't have any special insight. I'm a white male. Um, I care about these issues, but I want to give space and time to other people. Um, and I hope that the discussion will be completely open and candid and even if painful. Uh, so who would who would like to speak? This is Darren White. I'd li like to speak. Please. Um, first. Um, Chair Riz, thank you for calling this meeting. I'm glad I was available today to attend. Um, what I would like to say, it's hard to keep it short, but I'm going to do my best. I'm 54 years old. I have a daughter that is 26 and a daughter that is 29 and to think that in 2020 they would still have to deal with some of the stuff that um, when I was a youth that uh, I thought would be farther along and I get emotional because some of you may or may not know that I work with the reentry population and a lot of Black men. Um, I currently hold the position for the Obama Foundation and my brother Keeper Alliance. So the majority of all the men and boys I work with are young men of color. And to think in 2020 that someone can murder uh, someone and, and, and just blatantly try think they're going to get away with it is, 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 is unacceptable. And right now, in 2020, this is a time for change. It's not a time for me to be uh, passive aggressive or to a certain degree diplomatic anymore. And um, it's, 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 it's hard for me to even try to put this in, you know, civil, diplomatic words, the way that I feel right now, um, the concern that young men that look like me can get killed by law enforcement with no uh, consequences or repercussions, and to think that I have daughters out there that this possibly can happen to as well. So um, whatever we can do, to make art police um, uh, better, safer for not only blacks and, and people of color, but all people. Um, the abolishment of BART police, I believe, is totally, totally out of the picture because police and law enforcement are needed. But we need good, honest, respectful law enforcement officers and administration to do their jobs 
to the best of their ability and not be scared. Like I said earlier, this is this is just a question, and I'm gonna get off my soapbox. What, what makes us so scary? You guys have they have guns, they have training, they have backup. What makes responding to a call with a black or brown person so scary to police officers that the first thing they have to do is shoot us? And it, it's time for a change. And I'm going to do whatever I need to do to make change um, civilly. Um, I will attend whatever meeting, write whatever letter, show up to whatever I need to show up to to make sure that this police department does the best that they can do and do better. Because we definitely don't want another Oscar Grant situation. And it's a shame that somebody has to be killed for boards like this to exist or change to happen. So that's what I have to say right now. I'm gonna stop because if I don't stop, I might say some things that are not appropriate. And um, I was I was raised better than that. So thank you for letting me speak and I digress. Thank you, Mr. White. Um, this is David Risk again. Let me, um, since we have a lot of people on the phone um, and I do want to have a long public comment, I want to hear from everybody who can and we started at four and it's 440. I do want to get to that. I want to invite people on the board who have statements that they want to make to go ahead and make them, but not and I'm not suggesting that Mr. White was going on too long at all. But there is another agenda item after public comment and I want to get the public comment to hear people. So um, for so more, I invite more people to, to 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 speak up, but I just want to ask you to be mindful of keeping it somewhat brief. We will have this is the first in my view of multiple meetings addressed at this issue, so you will not be um, you will not be held short in the long sure. term. It's, yes, uh, Mr. Perez-Velez. Just Perez-Velez, District 9. I like to make a statement for the record because it is important. Sometimes we, we, our emotions are there, which are, which are the most important thing that we have, but I want to make sure that my boys are correct. I will have to leave the meeting to go into a use of force policy subcommittee meeting for the Berkeley Police Review Commission. So I like to say what I need to say because the work continues all the way throughout the Bay Area. So, and I sent you this statement, um, um, so it's on the record, um, Mr. Riss, but thank you Chair Riss and the Board of Directors for the opportunity to participate in this forum and for creating a platform for our voices and the voices of our community to be heard. First and foremost, I would like to offer my deep condolences to the Floyd family and our victims and condemn the actions taken by some law enforcement officers. To unequivocally stated, Black Lives Matter. This past week, we have seen protests and demonstrations following the senseless deaths of George Floyd, in addition to those of Alma Ebery, Breonna Taylor, and other by members of law enforcement. Let us not forget that our own history and beginning was created by the energy, commitment, and steadfast voices of the Justice for Oscar Grant movement. Our justice system and our public safety institutions have failed us. In this country, issues of implicit bias within our police system are directly related to the systemic racism that plagued our communities at a more alarming rate than the coronavirus. We cannot have a healthy nation without addressing this long existing plague as well. We who engage in the work of oversight know that the struggle for change can never be truly achieved without the voices of our communities. We continue to cringe at the notion that only as an end result of a tragedy do we ever come to terms with the need for systemic reform. Oversight and criminal justice reform should not, should not and never be reactive, but proactive and diligent. Unfortunately, our own political systems have let us down as well. Piecemeal solutions and band-aid measures implemented out of desire to do something or jump on the wagon or be seen as responding to the times are never enough. Although they can affect change, they can also miss the mark entirely. What we need is a full revision of the system. How, when, and why we police must be recalibrated and reimagined. Our own criminal system must be overhauled to achieve true equality of due process under the law. For anyone wondering what they can do to support this righteous cause, look to foster equality, respect, and the dignity of everyone in your community. We know what this entails. 
Look beyond your familiar circles and comfort levels and embrace other singularity and diversity. Now it is time for us as a nation and as a community through this ever present and endless struggle to achieve our own one word commitment to equality, respect, dignity, and justice for all. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Perez Velez. Um, to others uh, on the CRB want to speak up. This is member Armstrong uh, at large, vice chair. Um, I want to thank member White and uh, member Perez Velez for, for their comments on, on this uh, very important and somber issue. Uh, I've been reflecting a lot um, recently in I mean, a lot of you know I, I come from the middle of the country. Um, I hail from a very conservative family and so we've been having a lot of conversations recently around uh, police brutality, around race and racism uh, in this country. And, and it's, um, you know, what you said, Darren, uh, Member White, really moved me that, that we're not further along and that than we should be. Um, you know, and it's disappointing for everybody to, to feel that and, and to, uh, to see that today. So in, you know, in thinking, what can we do because I, you know, I'm in a position here on the, the CRB where I have a voice and I can use it and I want to use it for difference and for good. Um, I think back to one of my very first walkthroughs with the BART CRB, walking through the, uh, the trains, following the, the deputies as they went through their job. And I think about the tasks that they were assigned to do uh, along that that journey that I was with them. It was mostly kicking people off the trains for, for sleeping and for being homeless. And and I wonder, is this really the job of our most heavily armed, highly paid public employees? Uh, or is this a, a job that could be better assigned to somebody that's better trained, more qualified, less armed? Um, you know, and, and so I want to use this position. I want to use my voice to to try and lift up the, the voices of people of color to hear what they're saying and to, to try and make a, a difference for positive. So Chair Risk, I appreciate the, the energy that you've put into holding this, this special meeting and for challenging and uplifting this board uh, to do more, uh, to continue to lead. And I hope that we will continue to do that. Thank you. Do others want to make a, a comment uh, before we move towards public comment? Um, uh, Les Mensinger, District 6. Um, I would, I would, uh, it's tragic, this death that was Mr. Floyd's. And it's really sad that this was because of a Minneapolis police policy that this officer used for uh, this to happen, at which time two days later the city council jerked the policy. It's sad, and thank God we have a CRB and people to look at policies so that our police department can be much better than other police departments and that we go vigorously through all policies that something like this will never happen at BART again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mensinger. Um, does anybody else want to speak? Mr. Chair, this is Zach Bruno. I'd like to just briefly speak. Please. Thank you. Yeah, Zach Bruno representing BPOA and BPMA. Uh, well, I agree with the comments that have been given already. Thank you all. and Thank you, Mr. Chair, for calling this meeting. Um, yeah, it's just been really rough to think that anybody in this country would be, uh, would be treated in the way that Mr. Floyd was and would be killed. And uh, so that's, that saddened me personally, but it's also uh, caused me to, to dig in and and figure out, well, what, what could I possibly do to try to prevent this from happening in the future? I think we've all kind of been thinking that recently. 
more than we typically do. Uh, of course, because I've been appointed by the Park Police Association, Park Police Managers Association, I feel it's, it's important for me to give a little perspective from the police officer side of things. Certainly in no way at all to defend what happened in Minneapolis or in some other places, but to point out that the BART police do not have a policy in any way that would condone or would um, would be in favor of what happened to Mr. Floyd in Minneapolis. And I'm very happy to report that. I'm also very happy to report that since the tragic events that, that led to the killing of Oscar Grant, um, this body has done excellent work before I got on this board, but uh, even as I've been on it, I've seen really great progress made, recommendations made, and policies brought about by the BART board of directors that have been good. And I just want to point out that um, I think that this group is making a difference. I want to thank everybody on this board for, for being a part of it and for helping me to learn some things. Um, of course, my day job is as a professor, as a researcher, and so I'm interested in the data. I, I did a little checking. The Washington Post points out that in the last year for which there is data on these sorts of things, there were 29 unarmed people killed by police officers in the year 2019. That's certainly too many. One is too many. And there were 29 that happened just last year. Uh, as it happens, nine of those were African American and 19 of them were white. I bring this up not to be provocative or to just say, hey, what's going on? But I, I would just like to point out that by and large, those who are in law enforcement are not racist killers. They are good people who put their lives on the line and who wear the badge and strap on their, their firearm and their taser each day. And um, some of them have made horrifying mistakes, um, perhaps even murderous mistakes, and perhaps not even mistakes, perhaps murderous acts. But uh, I just wanted to point out that by and large, we have amazingly decent, humble, honorable men and women who are working in our law enforcement communities, and particularly in the BART Police Department. And I, for one, would just like to thank them. Um, I'm glad that in our last meeting, we were able to adjourn and Floyd. I wonder if uh, in this meeting today, we might adjourn in honor of Pat Underwood, who is a law enforcement officer who was killed in the line of duty just two weeks ago in downtown Oakland outside the federal building a few blocks from where we typically would meet on Webster Street. Um, he was married, had a family. He was doing his job, standing guard, and uh, a white van pulled up, opened fire, injured his partner, and killed him. He happened to be African-American, um, and he, he was doing his duty and paid for it with his life to keep us safe. And so I would make a motion that ultimately, when we do adjourn this meeting today, it would be in memory of Pat Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you all. This is thank Member Gomez. I would like to speak. Yeah, you can. Um, we're, this is, we're just on a discussion matter right now, so we're not entertaining okay. questions. Go ahead, um, Ms. Gomez. So, Member Gomez, District 7, um, I'm shaking a little having this conversation, so I apologize ahead of time. The first thing I want to say is that I'm actually appalled the numbers of white people that have been killed compared to black people was brought up just right now. Any good researcher and any good Great. person that looks at data would know that when we're talking about populations and disparities, that we also have to take into account the number of people that are in the general population. So the only reason why we have more white folks that you can even count have been killed by black folks is because we're looking at a disproportionate number of people in the general population being killed at an alarming rate by police. 
So I want to make sure that I state that, that that is actually the truth. The second thing that I want to say is that we are not absolved of responsibility of how far BART has to go. No, we haven't seen, you know, continuous uh, and, you know, egregious accounts of BART police officers maiming and killing police officers. But the ones that we have, they're egregious and they're outrageous. And we should never in any in any way think that somehow because we have less than a, in another department that somehow that in any way absolves us from um, needing to look at our own stuff. I also want to say that the majority of what we're really talking about is the way that implicit bias actually plays into the everyday contact with our passengers. It is the everyday contact with black girls and black men and people of color and queer people who are judged by their appearance unconsciously or consciously and are targeted for things like fare evasion, are targeted for eating a sandwich on BART, targeted for things that we do every day and that we, we can't just sit here and pretend like don't happen. So I, I just wanna say that as, as a member of this, um, a member of this board, um, it would behoove us all to, before we get a little too congratulatory, to remember that we have a task at hand and that we see data every, every meeting and that we are not always happy with that data. And there is a ways to go for us. We, we need to figure out what it is that BART police do not need to be doing on trains. Should they actually be going through the trains and actually deciding whether or not people need to be kicked off for not having a home? Should they be interacting with our mentally ill passengers? So I, I, I just really want us to take this role seriously. I want us to remember that we have a lot of work to do and we do have a lot of work to do. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Uh, William White. Yes. Um, first, I'd like to say um, that my history goes back to the 60s when young children were killed in churches, when voting rights advocates were pulled over, killed and burned, when marchers were trying to cross a bridge, were sprayed with hoses and bitten by dogs, I go back to those days and I look at these days. Yes, there has been a lot of changes, but I see and I feel the heart of many, and I'm going to say this, whites who took part in those changes. I see those hearts they have hardened over the years and have ignored what they were fighting for back in those days. I say that because every day before this event, you would hear about events such as Mr. Floyd's encounter and the whites would just ignore it and they would have small discussions but then they would go along their merry way and the african-american brown population and other minorities would fester with anger because they knew that the next day would bring the same, the same type of, the same type of behavior from the, the, the law enforcement agencies that were established to protect all. 
well, we we know how what the word all means uh, based on what history has shown us. I joined Police Oversight back in 1996 in the city of Berkeley. And recently I moved to, to BART after the Oscar Grant um, killing. I was part of the development of this, this particular board. And I, re I remember distinctly how the union fought tooth and nail against every aspect of the development of this board. I was angry because they had just killed a young man for no reason. And we were telling them, we want some way of controlling your behavior. Well, we got that control. What we need now are the, this type of control over law enforcement throughout the United States. Every single municipality in this country should have an oversight board like BART Oversight Board, Berkeley's Oversight Board, San Jose's Oversight Board, a board for people to come to and voice their concerns over the behavior of the quote, bad apples in the department. With that, there's a new, there's a new time ahead of us, a time where we can move to where you look at a country like Japan, where law enforcement doesn't kill people. You look at a country like England, where law enforcement doesn't kill people. Look at, there's plenty of civilizations in this world where you don't have to kill people to keep people behaving in, in, in the right way. And we need that type of behavior from our police departments throughout this United States. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. White. Um, I think almost everybody on the board has spoken. Um, Mr. Liu or Mr. Longmire, did you want to say anything further? Uh, Ken Liu, just Pete one. Longmire, District 2. <clears throat> Let's have Mr. Liu first. And you don't have to say anything. We're going to have later opportunities to speak. But if you want to, I want to move to public comment next. Uh, I'll keep it short. I think we could all agree that all the actions that have happened uh, um, to Mr. Floyd are, with using the strongest words possible, wrong in all sense of the term. And for the record, you know, I'm standing with everyone else on the board uh, here with, and I listen and hear that what everyone else is saying. And um, yeah, I, I've seen it and we do need to take action and i do believe we are moving in the right direction and so as a committee i am standing with everyone else at the same time thank you that's great uh mr longmar mr chair you know i think i'm gonna uh reserve my comments for another time um this is not really a good time for me to express what i want to feel my feelings are very strong uh, I hail from a, a different background um, than my colleagues, so <clears throat> I think I'll reserve comment right now, but um, I would love to share my feelings and my thoughts with my colleagues at a later date. Okay, understood. Um, uh, Darren White, did you have a comment that you wanted to make? Doesn't sound like uh, yeah. it. I think he... Yeah, yes, I, I did. Um, man, this is this is this is a this is a tough one, um, Chair Riss. But during this time that our nation is going through, um, some of the comments that I read on social media and 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 
and some of the things that I'm hearing tonight and, and I hear every, every day since um, we have a new regime running the, running the country, the best thing that I can say is that it's good to know where, where, where certain people stand so you know how to deal with them up front. I'd rather know how you are, how you feel. I can respect somebody more that can look at me on my face and tell, tell me how you feel up front than to act some way in front of me and then behind my back do something else. So um, just, just knowing where certain people stand on certain, certain things, um, thank you. Because then that lets me know how I can uh, deal with and or approach you um, uh, at other times. So um, I, I, I want to say that I believe this board is doing the best it can. I do believe BART is well ahead of a lot of law enforcement agencies in this country, and I commend them on that. Um, and it's because of this board, I believe that's why they are of head and the incident with Officer Grant is why they had to even implement some of that stuff. So as long as we can continue on a path to do better, I'm going to support better. Um, and just like uh, Brother Longmire, um, I have a different view and a different background with law enforcement and as a black man um, that, like you said, the chair risk that we'll have a, a, another opportunity to talk later. I would love to talk more uh, amongst us and um, see how we can work together, work together to make this board and the BART police the best that it can be. Okay, thank you, Mr. White. Um, we are going to go into public comment, and but first we're going to check on the BART board directors because yes. um, we, we can't have too many of them on the call at the same time. Um, I think we're still under the limit, but I want to go through the directors first if they want to speak, um, and then we'll start calling the members of the public um, by telephone number, uh, since um, I can see there are a lot of people on the line. Um, so let me start. Uh, Janice Lee, are you on the line? And do you want to yep, make a I'm here. Just with me and myself. Thank you. Go ahead and make a public comment. Great. Um, I, I'm. I, I'm going to try to keep this under three minutes. Um, I first want to just deeply, deeply thank you all, uh, the CRB members for taking the additional time to have this special meeting today. I, I know you just met last Monday. Um, so I want to thank you, Chair Risk, for calling this meeting. And, you know, I've been listening to the commentary for a last little bit here. I want to say I was personally moved by Member Gomez's comments just now. Um, I have been to a past CRB meeting and have said, hey. Um, so for you, for those who don't know, my name is Janice Lee. I was just elected to the BART board in November 2018 along with a couple other new directors. Um, I represent District 8, which is the west side of San Francisco. Um, I am a queer woman of color. I have worked uh, as a community organizer for the past, gosh, now it's like 12 years. Um, I really cut my teeth. I started a community center back in Buffalo, New York, working predominantly with teens of color, particularly refugees from Africa. And um, that was really when I had the first experience of how people of color uniquely interact negatively with police enforcement. So a few remarks here. Um, there are multiple things that can be true at the same time. And there are many things I believe that I think are at odds with each other and that I continue to think about as I sort of navigate what's happening right now with BART. So there are four things there. First, I fundamentally believe that the institution of police is mired in a racist history. This does not speak to any individual officer. It doesn't speak to our police department specifically. This is that the institution of law enforcement and policing in the United States is racist. 
I recognize that these words can be hard to hear, but we are a country that's founded in a racist past of slavery, of disallowing women to, the right to vote, um, and a country that until this morning in the Supreme Court ruling this morning allowed LGBTQ people to be fired from their job because they are LGBTQ. So to say that the history of police is racist is not an outrageous statement. If you are outraged, I would ask you to ask yourself why. Second, keeping in mind that first thing, it is also true, and I do truly believe that bar police is far, far ahead of the curve. Other CRB members have already pointed this out when it comes to police reform. And truly, it is because of the murder of Oscar Grant that forced this agency, this transit system, to reckon with itself. You all, as CRB members, have a seat on this because of the reforms that came after January 1st, 2009. The third thing is that it is also true that there is a movement and a groundswell of people calling for the defunding and the abolition of police right now and have been for decades. To ignore that groundswell of support, as I said at the BART board meeting last week, is to be willfully ignorant. And as we rage, as our communities are taking the streets, they're burning stuff, um, they're taking the streets to reject police brutality, that has only led to more police brutality. And more and more black brothers and sisters continue to be killed by law enforcement throughout the country. Right here, Sean Monterosa, um, killed by California Highway Patrol. In Atlanta, Friday evening, Richard Brooks. And the names, they just continue to come. And lastly, the thing that is also true is that it is true that black folks continue to be killed and to be found dead at and on BART. So I just want to be clear about where I, just one of the nine BART directors, stand. And I think that all those things can continue to be true and that I can continue to believe all those things in tension. So where do I stand now? First, I'm committed to the budget before us. Um, I, I think you all probably know of this budget and the fiscal year 21 budget that the BART board is expected to approve on June 25th. Because I do think it's important to keep our BART workers employed, including BART police, and to give our incredible frontline employees a peace of mind that we are grateful for their work and that we need them to run our system and our riders um, to be able to tell them we are ready to scale up service when our ridership returns. But um, I I'm not sure if this has been made clear to CRB. The staff is going to be coming back to the board with quarterly revisions. Um, the first one is expected to be in October of this year. I do want to revisit our priorities and I am open to radical police reforms, including defunding police and shifting funds to social workers, unarmed presence, and other proven ways to make our transit system safe. From everything I have seen and heard, no police officer becomes a sworn officer so that they can forcibly enforce fare evasion, enforce eating and drinking, or skateboarding on BART platforms. So why are armed officers put in charge of that? I do think it is time that we rethink why our system isn't safe and what the role of BART police is to keep our system, our employees, and our BART riders safe. We already know that across the board, folks have questions about our system safety because what we are doing today is not enough. So all I'm gonna end is by saying that I do think that the CRB, this body will be the forefront of the conversation here. And I will ask the board, the BART board, to rely on CRB to do the work and be a key venue of these conversations. Um, I look forward to engaging all of you. Um, my email is janice.lee at BART.gov. Um, please engage the board. And thank you again, Chair Risk, for reaching out to the board members and asking us to uh, be here with y'all today. Thank you so much. Um, let's keep going through the BART board directors to make sure that we don't have more than four. Um, Director Rebecca Saltzman, are you on the line and would you like to make a comment? You can press star six to unmute yourself, Director Saltzman. Right, it sounds like maybe she had to drop Hi. off. Sorry. Oh. Go ahead. Hi, I'm, I'm here. I had just had to get unmuted and I'm caring for my baby daughter at the moment. So I didn't have as many hands available. Um, so I will be very brief, um, but thank you so much for having this meeting and for the, the resolution that you passed um, and for bringing such focus to this issue. Um, 
I want to, I'm mostly here to listen to what you have to say, and I want to work really closely with the CRB um, at looking at, and with the police department and looking at the reforms that are needed and moving this discussion forward. Um, I'm very open to recommendations that you make that need sign off by the BART board. So I, I look forward to working with all of you. And I did want to mention that I have made a recommendation for a change to the budget that had been proposed, which is to, um, there was a budget recommendation to hire more police officers and fair enforcers to enforce social distancing. And I have requested to instead um, see the numbers come back of hiring unarmed um, ambassadors instead. The ambassador program was an idea of uh, Director Dusty that was brought forward by several of us a couple of years ago. And we just started implementing this year. And I think that is one option for moving forward to what Director Janice Lee just said about, you know, figuring out how to have police focus on the real crimes and to have unarmed ambassadors or social workers or however we however we figure it out to focus on the other big issues that are happening on BART but that don't require a badge and a gun to address. Um, so I, I look forward to working with you all on that. Um, and if you have other ideas, both for the budget or other policies, I would love to hear them as well. Um, my email address is rebecca.saltzman at BART.gov. Thank you. Thank you, Director Saltzman, for that. Um, Director Rayburn, are you on the line? Would you like to make a comment? Thank you, Chair Riss. This is Robert Rayburn. I represent the Oakland, San Leandro, and Alameda areas. And I was elected in 2010, shortly after the Oscar Grant murder. And there have been, of course, tremendous reforms, including this board, the Office of the Independent Auditor, I've attended most of the meetings of this board ever since it was formed. Um, I appreciate that last Monday I was given the opportunity to share with you that we were moving forward with uh, a resolution that was passed uh, in support of uh, Congresswoman Barbara Lee's resolution to establish trust and uh, build racial healing. And I'm interested as mostly today in seeing that your discussion that you started last Monday, and you didn't start the discussion last Monday on the new policies or changes that are ne needed. You've been doing this ever since the formation of this board. And we adopted 50 new uh, policies over the past, in. in actually in 2018 as a board of directors that changed the uh, initial mission and reflected both the national black law enforcement groups and as well as the uh, independent uh, input from outside consultants. I want to see you get to your final agenda item today and approve changes that you can all agree on that we need to embrace. I know in the past you've focused on the use of force, on the carotid holds, as well as early, early warning for officers. You've been involved from day one when we adopted the uh, policies regarding what at the time was uh, a watershed effort to uh, make sure that BART officers were armed with non-lethal force, the tasers, and that they were also armed with cameras. And so these are important things that you have been a participant in, and I want to ensure that you continue to have a voice. Thank you. Thank you, Director Rayburn. Um, I think we have one other director. Director Liz Ames, are you on the phone and would you like to make a public comment? Star six, Director Ames, to speak and unmute yourself. Let 
Right. Maybe she had to drop off. Um, let me know, Mag, if she comes back on. Um, okay, I want to start. She is I'll... still on the line. Um, Director Ames, you can press star six and unmute yourself. Aha. Can you hear me? This is Director Ames. Hi, thank you. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll be brief. I just I heard the comments about um, you know everybody every city should have a police oversight board to um, just the the need for justice and there's no you know there's um because apparently there's just no consequences for these kind of tragic acts so. I, I do think society and, and the, you know, the community is at a tipping point, obviously, and uh, the CRB is um, essential to accountability, to making sure that we, uh, the BART police and the BART board is um, accountable. And uh, I think it's an essential function that I think uh -huh. a lot of people in the community are going to look to when they make substantial changes so i really applaud your work here i look forward to seeing great policy changes ideas reforms possibly uh we'll we'll see what happens but in regards to the budget uh i think a lot more can be done i've i've asked for more cuts from staffing pay raises or getting a 2.75% pay raise, and uh, there's a lot of things that can be done on the budget right now, and I don't agree with what's going forward, but we do have a plan for the fair gates. It's not fully funded. That came out in the last grand jury report from Contra Costa County, and I'm, I'm happy that uh, the, the, the grand jury report that we just received asked for a funding plan and putting in the fair gates. So I think we're making slow progress. It doesn't seem fast enough, and I do appreciate this. This year, I mean, your work for continuous improvement. I'm looking forward to uh, your leadership and guidance. So, thank you so much. Thank you, Director Ames. Okay, so we're going to move into public comment now. Um, public comment um, should be restricted to three minutes. Um, so please um, be mindful of your time. Um, Mag Tatum, our um, secretary, will be timing you and let you know when your time is up. And we'll ask that you politely um, stop and finish your thought when you're done. Um, and I think the way we're going to do this is um, if you, I'm going to, I have a list of, of telephone numbers that are on the conference call right now. So I'm going to call, I'm going to go through them and I'm going to call out numbers. Um, and if you're on the line and a, a member of the public, press, is it star six, Meg? Yes. Once you hear your number and um, you'll have three minutes, please um, introduce yourself. Just give us your name when you um, start. Um, and if others could please keep their, their um, telephones muted, I'd appreciate it. All right. Uh, we're going to start with a number that just joined uh, 303-589-6616. Please let us know if you want to make a public comment. That's 303-589-6616. Press star six and unmute yourself. Hi, um, I don't need to make comment right now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next number is 310-702-5825. Five eight two five. Hi, uh, my name is Tyler. Um, first of all, can you please not read people's full phone numbers on a meeting that's sure. going to be recorded and posted publicly? Do the last four digits or something Wait. like that. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Thanks. Um, I wasn't going to call in and talk about um, defunding police or abolishing police, um, but since I'm talking anyway, I will just say that like. If abolishing police entirely seems too radical, abolishing BART police 
and then we'll still have SFPD, Oakland PD, all these other police departments that cover the areas that BART covers. I think that should at least be considered. Um, but I, I did want to call in and say um, that it's a little disappointing that the question of taking the word murder out of the statement that you guys wrote was even a question. Of course it was murder. And if you are literally a member of the jury that's going to be deciding that case, that's one thing. But if you're literally anyone else, call it murder. That's what it is. Um, and I, I, I think I missed it. I think that is what you ended up doing. Um, but the fact, again, the fact that was even a question is uh, frankly a little ridiculous. Thank you for that comment. I appreciate it. Okay, the next number is a 408 area code and the last two digits are 2871. 408 and 2871. Please let us know if you want to make a public comment. I have no comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the next the next caller is uh, area code 415 and the last two the last four digits are 2960. 2960. 415 2960 are the last four digits. Star six, if you want to unmute yourself. Okay. The next number is area code 415. Last it four digits are 5378. 5378. Go. 5378, did you want to make a comment? Okay, we'll move on. Um, the next number is 415, and the last digits are last four. Oops. Did, um, the last four digits, 415, uh, 5378. Area code four one five five three seven eight just muted itself. Okay, four one five one nine five six are the last four digits. Four one five nineteen fifty six. Okay, four one five last four digits are zero six five. Oops. Go ahead. Who do we have there? We can't hear you if you're making a public comment. Try again. Okay, I'm not hearing anybody. Um, let's move on. Uh, at the end of this, we'll ask if anybody's left out, so don't worry. 415. Um, 415, the first is the area code. The last four digits are 3127. Yeah. Three one two seven. Do you want to make a public oh, comment? Uh, oh, I've been waiting for public comments, and public comments come on, and they mute me. Yep, you're, you're, we can hear you. Go ahead. Is that five three seven eight? Make please make a public comment. Oh yes, it is. Thank you. This is Yolanda Banks, the mother of a murdered child, Shalene Kendall, January the third, two thousand and eighteen, by a bar officer. This brutus act have gone on before and after BC. Cain killed his brother Abel, meaning humanity, the children of humanity. And if you don't take precedence in life, then the world of death will take over. George Floyd's death has become a beacon of light for all young people and old as well to look and live, to give judgment to the people as the woman stand, their symbol, with the staff in her hand and the scale. But yes, she's blindfolded. She can't see. So how can you give true judgment? Each of you, you debated on yes or no, should it be murder? Well, the Mosaic Law talks about thou shall not kill. 
do you reword or rechange the word in order to fit your narrative or narrative? I lost the song that I gave birth to. I carried him. I'm the keeper and holder. I was the breath of his life. When he was in my womb, I breastfed him. He was my son that was taken from me by a Bart officer. Walking to Bart with his two children and his companion. Murdered, shot in the back three times. But no, you won't speak of this because I'm Hebrew. I'm of an indigenous and cultural way of life. See, you owe it to the people to give justice and liberty to all. But yet it have not been given. Why? Because of the carnal minds and the lower nature of Cain won't allow you to do that which is right. And no wise would I be in a debate if it was murder or not. But we saw with our own eyes it was murder. Testify that which you see with your own eyes. And you saw him calling out for his mother. Until you come into the mind and the principle of the femininity principle, the mothers who are the carriers of life who are losing their children, the children are being taken away. You will be held accountable. You cannot scratch this off and change it, but it's going to take the truth, wisdom, knowledge, and most of all, an understanding. Lift up your voice and make a difference. Don't beat around the bush. Losing my 28-year-old son, Charlene Tindall. It's horrifying. Every day. Every single day. And I'm a strong mother because I fought. I fought in court. But every single day, I deal with a part of me. That Mabel cord that I cut him off from, that each of you are cut off from a mother. How can you not recognize the mother's children in their life? I'm requesting that each of you do that which is holy, do that which is right. And the only way I can say, bless shall you be if you do so. Thank you. Thank you for that public comment. Um, the next, the next person uh, on my list is area code four one five, nineteen fifty six are the last four digits. I think we did this one. Okay, four one five, last four digits are zero six five nine. Four one five zero six five nine are the last four digits. Okay, four one five three one two seven. Three one two seven. It's star star six to unmute yourself. Four one five last four digits are three one two seven. The next number on the list is area code four one nine. And the last four digits are 9846. 9846. Go ahead. Four one nine nine eight four six. We can't hear you. It looks like you've unmuted yourself, but I'm not hearing you. Can you hear me now? Mag yes, thank you. Okay. okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, so, hi, my name is Krista Hartsock, and I'm a resident of San Francisco. I'm calling today to ask you all to do what is in your power to defund BART police and instead use the funding to positively reinvest in our public transit system and the communities it serves. BART police are unnecessary, and using them in cases of fare evasion or quality of life is cruel and punitive. BART police are poor use of the already limited funding available to the public transit lifeline of our region. Accessible public transit is a boon to our communities and local economy, and punishment for fare evasion and things like sleeping on trains is criminalizing poverty at best and deadly at worst. The enforcement penalizes people for being poor, and it inserts unnecessary armed officers into otherwise peaceful interactions, as we saw with the tragic killing of Oscar Grant, which formed this board, uh, Celine Tyndall, whose mother we just heard from earlier in this call, and others. 
Our police creates an unsafe environment and possibly carceral ramifications for a public service that many, including people with low incomes, communities of color, undocumented immigrants, and others rely on to work, see family, and to make the Bay Area a great place to live. But you are involved with this board, so I don't need to tell you why BART's important. But policing denies these people and others their safety. Reforming the police is not enough. Inserting armed officers into our transit is unnecessary and misguided. Um, as Janice and many others have said, the institution of policing itself is racist. Changing use of force policies, equipping police with cameras, and arming police with still deadly tasers, in addition to their guns, will not prevent racist violence from being enacted by armed officers asked to engage daily with the public. Removing armed officers and diverting that funding to other options, including expanding access to, to public transit, funding the homeless outreach team, and more, would do that. Um, it's for these reasons and more that I join many others in asking you to defund the BART police and reinvest that funding in our community. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, the next number on the, the list is area code 425, and the last four digits are 1829. 1829, star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, my name is Marty Deans. I live in San Francisco. Uh, my home station is Glen Park. And I just want to say that I'm also pretty disappointed with the early motions to remove the word murder from the George Floyd statement. I think that citing dictionary definitions, which we've seen on the BART board as well, is just a way to absolve you of responsibility for, like, making a statement to your community or taking actions to fix that thing. I'm also extremely disappointed in the comments that were made by Zach Bruno that included data <laughs> around white versus black murder by law enforcement. That's pretty shameful use of data. If you're a researcher, you should know better than that, how to analyze those numbers. And in an emotionally charged conversation, perhaps keep them to yourself. Um, I also want to pile on that I would encourage the defunding or significantly reduced funding of BART, um, excuse me, BART police, I ride BART every day to go to work. Um, BART police have only, I've only seen them escalate situations that could have been resolved without the use of force or, um, you know, like having those weapons on their person does nothing but intimidate the people that they're talking to who are members of our community, who are often paying BART members who deserve, you know, better than that. And uh, that is it, I yield my time, thank you. Thank you for that comment. Um, the next number on my list is 510, and the last four digits are 4609. 4609, you can press uh, star 6 to unmute yourself. Area code, go ahead. I have no comment at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, the next person on the list is area code 510. And the last four digits are 3927. 3927, uh, press star six to unmute yourself. Three nine two seven. Okay, the next number on the list is also five one zero, and the last four digits are one four zero one. 1401, area code 510, last four digits, 1401. Okay. Next caller is 510, uh, the last four digits are 6154. 6154, do you want to make a public comment? Press star six. Okay, the next person on the line is 510, and the last four digits are 5605. 5605. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, hello. My name is Karis Taylor, and I'm a public school teacher, and I live here in West Oakland. Um, it is dangerous to ride BART if you are black, brown, unhoused, or experiencing a mental health crisis. And if you are some combination of any of those things, the threat to your life is even more acute. BART police do not make our community more safe. 
they are untrained and unequipped to deal with the public health emergencies that make up the majority of the disruptions to our public commutes. They are employed to prioritize property and profits over human life. It has become unbearably obvious, even to shamefully oblivious white people such as myself, that police officers, regardless of their city or department, conduct themselves in a way that dehumanizes humans who are not evidently middle or upper class white people. This is not an issue of a few individual officers who were not paying attention during their implicit bias training. This is rooted in a police culture that lacks moral and legal accountability. This is a matter of carelessly allocated resources. I want my tax dollars to go to tending to the needs of our most vulnerable community members so that desperation and perpetual disenfranchisement stop trapping people in trauma cycles. The BART police do not make us safe. Secure and affordable housing would make us safe. Healthcare would make us safe. Trauma-informed crisis intervention specialists trained in de-escalation would make us safe. Those things don't exist right now, and part of the reason for this is because our city slash state's funds are going to military who kill people of color with impunity. As evidenced by the thousands of us marching through the streets these past two weeks, our community demands police departments, including BART's, be defunded. In the meantime, we call upon you to decrease the number of BART police and order them to stop enforcing fair evasion and sandwich eating, which only give them an excuse to harass and assault our community members. We also want you to put resources towards outreach to our houseless neighbors who take refuge in BART stations and cars since there are precious few other places they are allowed to exist in our ruthlessly capitalist society. Thank you for taking the time to listen to another furious public school teacher who is at her wit's end fearing for her black students' lives. I yield my time. Thank you for that public comment. Um, the next person on the list is area code 510, and the last four digits are 7558. 7558. To unmute yourself, press star five, uh, 6. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> yes, I am Cephas, affectionately known to the community as Uncle Bobby X. I am the uncle of Oscar Grant. Uh, I guess I'm a little disturbed too and a little shaken up, but I'm going to see if I can put this together. Okay, there is no horror comparable to the murder of your loved one by those that we believe were here to serve and protect us. It is forever etched in my memory, our family memory, more perhaps because we have it on video. And so I definitely know what the George Floyd family is going through and many others that have actually witnessed their loved one get murdered on video. The power of the police to use deadly force is one of the most significant responsibilities we can give any public official. That responsibility must be guided by common sense legislation that protect human rights and save human life. I am disturbed by Bruno's statement and take issue with his statement. His statement is more like that argument concerning whether we should say black lives matter or all lives matter. All lives cannot matter if black lives matter, don't matter. So it's important for us to realize that we have to be clear in our statement. I really became interested in this meeting more so. First of all, thank you, David, for calling them. But uh, concerning a BART board member, Deborah Allen, and her racist statements last week, And I wanted to have a discussion about that. But now I've been taken for a twist because I'm not sure how this Zachary Bruno became a part of the oversight committee and he's representing the police and is making it clear that we all hear that that's what he's there for. So any kind of common sense legislation or suggestions that's going to pertain to holding police accountable and bringing about real transparency is going to be met by him in opposition. So we have to really consider his position on this board, and I'm going to take a look at the bylaws to see how he got on the board anyway. What I'm really concerned about, too, is how the 
Citizen Oversight Committee can assist us maybe tomorrow. Well, I'm calling for a press conference tomorrow with the families that's been impacted by police violence by BART to be at the BART uh, board meeting location for a press conference in response to those racist statements. I um, is asking for your support and even your suggestions because that's not the first time Deborah Allen has attacked our family, the Oscar Grant family. In November, she put a racist post up and had all the white folks all across this country attacking us as a family. Now, she makes the statement that she did last week concerning the police don't murder folk. And yet you heard Miss Yolanda Banks Reed talk about Shalene Tindo. You hear us talking about Oscar Grant. You hear Dina Labello talking about Nate Greer. It's been at least 14 to 15 people since the existence of Bark that has been murdered by the Bark Police Department. And so for us to even have that argument concerning taking the word out, it is my position, my perception, and I'm sure it's the board's, the, the Oversight Committee's perception, that what we've seen happen to George Floyd was murder. And none of us should be arguing about whether we should water it down and say it was just a killing. It was flat-out murder, and I'm appalled at this Bruno character for even being on our committee. And matter of fact, we got to do some work to say about getting him removed. Thank you. Hey, thank you for that public comment. Um, my next, um, my next person to comment is area code 415 and the last three digits are 3127. Three one two seven. Four one five uh three one two seven. Okay. Um we'll come back. Uh let's see. The next person is five one zero um uh, the last four digits are seven five five eight. Seven five five eight five one oh seven five five eight seven five five eight. Nope. Okay. Area code five one zero nine. Nope. Seven five five eight is unmuted. That Go seven ahead. Five five eight was Uncle Bobby. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you, Uncle. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm kind of angry, so I don't need to speak no more. I I hear that. The next person on the list is five one zero ninety three hundred. Are the last four digits nine three zero zero? Star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead. Hello, this is Wanda Johnson, the mother of Oscar Grant, who was killed January first, two thousand nine. And I say the word killed. He was murdered. Um, I'm appalled at two things. One, first, is Deborah Allen, the comments that was made on the news. Um, that is our problem today, is that we do not want to accept responsibility, okay? Um, we do not want to call murder, murder. George Floyd was murdered, and that's how it should be in the record. And that should not change. It should not be watered down. We cannot continue to try not to accept responsibility. If a person is murdered, that's what it should be called. Now, if it was someone else doing the killing, we wouldn't have a problem saying that it was murder. But when it comes to the police officers, we have a problem saying that a person is murdered. And so I want to say publicly that um, whatever we can do to get Deborah Allen off the board, she needs to be off the board. You cannot continue to have racist people on your board um, be an, exa an example or setting an example for BART because this is the second time or third time that she has 
done the very thing that she did on the news. There is a concern for justice in our world today. However, to achieve justice for the world, we must understand God's views. We must understand that God will judge injustice and wrong. And so when it's wrong, it's wrong. And it's very wrong to try to change the narrative and to make people think that a person wasn't murdered when, in fact, they were murdered. The last thing that I want to say is that these meetings, they must continue, but you must listen to what the people are saying and take action on that. The defunding of the funds for BART can go to the housing projects. They can go to the jobs. They can go to uh, community services because in order for us to continue the way that we're continuing to try to deny that African-American or black people are being killed at a a, a lesser rate or uh, tend to, I forgot what he said, but trying to give the statistics that white people are killed. But look at it. Black people are killed are killed at a higher rate by police officers, and this has to change. We have to change that narrative by holding officers accountable for their actions, and when they have a complaint against them, that those complaints are acted upon and that you just don't let them build up. If you allow them to build up, you will see the same case that happened was happening with uh, George Ford killing the police officer who's had all those complaints and nothing was done, nothing was done, and he's and George is dead today. I encourage you to look at the complaints and action be taken against those complaints when they are filed against the police officers. Thank you. Thank you, Wanda, for that comment. Um, the next, the next person on my list is five one zero three zero three two three zero three two. Five one zero. Last four digits are three zero three two. Star six to unmute yourself. It looks like you're unmuted. I don't hear a comment. Okay, the next person on the list is 510. Uh, the, the last four digits are 8111. 8111. Go ahead. Hi, this is Cydia Garrett, um, former uh, chairperson of this committee. I just um, commend you as a board on making the statement and keeping the word murder in because that's what it was. I also just want to mention, I was also offended by the comments made by a few of the board members. And I encourage you, if you want to be a part of what this board was meant to do, the work that it was chartered to do, you need to really educate yourself on what's really happening in this world. If George Floyd's murder was the first instance of you understanding that this is a real problem, you really need to do your research, and there's a lot of information out there that you can find. Um, I also want to encourage this board to look at the interaction, the interaction that is happening, just like board member Gomez mentioned, the interaction that's happening with people who are being stopped by the police. Are these stops necessary? Are there other resources that should be put there? Really look at what's going on because it's the interaction is where things go wrong and because people are being stopped unnecessarily or aggravated unnecessarily. So um, that is all I have to say. Again, I commend you for having these conversations and moving the work forward. Continue to allow um, this board hopefully set the bar high for other organizations across the country because change needs to happen, radical change. And I yield any time that might be available to Ms. Johnson or to Uncle Bobby. Thank you. Thank you, Cydia. Um, we will circle back at the end and ask for- Ms. Uncle Bobby, can I get that the rest of that time? You can, you can. Yeah, yeah I just wanted to, I want the board, our, 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 our citizen oversight board to begin to really investigate AB 71 with the use of force data collection, making sure that 
our BART agency, our BART police agency is reporting to the Department of Justice, California Department of Justice, um, the use of force that's been used. Also, the Racial Profiling Act, or AB 953, which is the Racial Identification Profiling Act, making sure that BART is supplying that information again to the, uh, according to the law that's been passed. Um, you know, AB 748, which is the video audio release, we definitely want to make sure that BART is honoring these pieces of legislation that we fought so hard to get passed. AB 1421, which really let us know just how the BART policing agency did hide the information behind jo Johannes Mesley when he had um, complaints filed against them and they claimed they didn't have any. And then we find out in 2019 that he had six before he murdered Oscar Grant, all documented. And we need to really make sure that BART honors AB 392, which is the California Act to Save Lives. These are legislation that has been voted on or should have been signed into law by our state governor and that we need to make sure that our policing agency, BART specifically, is held accountable to those legislation and so that we can really uh, be the forerunner or the foreleader in a organization that has taken heed to what the people want, what the legislators have passed, what has been signed in the law. You know, and so Bruno needs to go look at AB 71, use of force data collection, and make sure that his his comrade are reporting to the Department of Time Justice. Has okay. I'm sorry. I'll go ahead and end there, but I needed that to say that. Th that's Thank okay. You. Thank you for that public comment. Um, the next speaker is 510, area code 510, and the last four digits are 1928. 1928, and you can press star six to unmute yourself if you have a public comment. 510, last four digits are 1928. Okay, um, the next person on the list is um, 510, or sorry, 650, uh, 4421. Area code 650, 4421. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Simona Manganelli. I'm a resident of San Francisco and a frequent BART writer. Um, I've been listening to a lot of the comments uh, here on this board and the public comments, and I've also been listening and participating in public comments on other police agencies with the Board of Supervisors in San Francisco, the um, school district of San Francisco. And one thing that public commenters all have in common, 100% of the callers, it's very striking, is that not a single one of them feels safe when police are around. Not a single one. It's, it's, it's unconscionable that BART continues to fund to the degree of $91 million um, to put black and brown people on the BART system in danger. Uh, it's just gross. And you see this manifesting itself with Zachary Bruno's completely racist comments. And uh, BART Director Deborah Allen, I like to call her Karen Allen, uh, her completely racist comments at the last uh, uh, Board of Directors meeting. And it, it really makes me question whether this board is actually going to do anything or the Board of Directors is really going to do anything of BART if these people are on the boards here. So I just want to say that um, not, a single pe not a single person feels you know, safe with police around. And so I... I'm calling for the defund, defunding, the disbanding, and the abolishment of BART police because the $91 million can go to so much better things. And by the way, those double tall murder fair gates as well, those oh. ones that are going to cost 15 to $25 million per year over the next four years, those are also just designed to put black and brown people in harm's way. And that money can be better spent elsewhere as well. So in conclusion, abolish the police and fuck the racist people on these boards. Thanks so much. Thank you for that public comment. Um, the next person on the list is um, area code uh, 415, 
9923127 go ahead 415 or 3127 star 6 to unmute yourself I'm not hearing anybody are you there David yes go ahead oh good that worked uh, hi yes thanks um, so this is Ben Douglas I'm a, also a former member and chair of the board uh, and I just want to first say to the members of the board I, I can appreciate from experience is a very difficult um, place to be because these issues are complicated and obviously the people are understandably very upset uh, and I on a personal level I, I share that it was just horrific watching watching what happened to George Floyd um, it, it, uh, it was very emotional for me and I can only imagine what it's like for people um, in his his direct community um, I would say um, when, when you, you're thinking about this and I'd speak from experience being on the board that as much as the problem a lot of the problem um, in, immediately comes from the police they're also going to have to be part of the solution. Um, I think just getting rid of police, not having some kind of law enforcement agency uh, in BART is just not realistic. There, there is a need to have them there. Uh, however, and I say this having you know, spoken to people who are, who've had problems with the police as well as officers themselves, I think uh, solutions like decreasing the amount of interaction that police have with the public um, and pairing it back to only when it's really necessary to have somebody with a gun uh, and a club interacting uh, would be great. Uh, it would be would reduce the chances for unpleasant and often violent interactions. And frankly, I think the police officers themselves, um, and they said to me when, when I talked to them about this, would welcome it. They don't like being put in the position of having to be sort of enforcers of social norms um, or even m minor rule violations like food and noise, sleeping on the train, things like that, that are much better handled by non-sworn personnel and often, as people have pointed out, social workers who can really try to uh, really assist people who often are really hurting and need, need assistance from a social worker uh, rather than uh, intervention from a police officer. Um, as I said, these are, these are really complicated issues, and um, I think... I just encourage everyone to maybe not, not uh, ignore all the emotions involved, but um, balance those with the need to find constructive solutions that are going to need to bring all of the different uh, parties uh, in and help have them be part of crafting um, a better way to, to keep people safe and secure on BART. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Ben. <clears throat> Thank you for that public comment. Um, the next number on the list is area code 650. And the last four digits are 9643. 9643, and you can press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Isaac. I live in San Jose uh, next to the Newberry Asia station. And it's the first time that I attend one of those meetings. Uh, I didn't know anyone in the board, and I must say I was appalled at the comments by Zachary Bruno. First, at the insistence to remove the word murder when that's what best describes what happened there uh, second at the racist comments with like statistics that are manipulated to make it sound like white people were more targeted by police which is not the case uh yeah i'm as the uncle bobby said i think it's just like not fair that this person is part of the board and has those comments to say uh, I am supportive of, in general, the funding BART police, although I'm not a frequent writer because the part has made it here, but from my experience so far, it doesn't seem like they do a good job at ensuring that anyone is safe, especially black and brown people. Um, I was very moved by the words of both Uncle Bobby and uh, Oscar Grant's uh, mom, and I was appalled to at the comments by Deborah Allen uh, last week. Um, I agree with them, right, that that as long as these people are in the board of directors of BART, uh, it's hard to make progress. Uh, on the other hand, I was, I'm was i very thankful to everyone in this board that pushed for the 
uh, keeping the murder uh, wording in the statement. Uh, very grateful for uh, to Janice Lee for uh, her strong support for uh, reform or defunding the bad police and keeping all those options open. And I hope that we can find uh, a way to basically move uh, funding from bar police to uh, other options like making bar more affordable, uh, having like I don't know, mental health assistance for anyone who seems to have any distress at bar and so on, right? Uh, uh, that's, that's it. Thank you. What the fuck? Thank you. Thank uh, you for that comment. Um, the next person on my list is area code 714. And the last four digits are 3140. 3140, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is Jim Tingle. Uh, as a citizen of San Francisco, I'd like to strongly urge the BART to reevaluate its budgetary priorities going forward with an eye towards reallocating funds currently spent on BART PD to programs and services that allow BART to achieve its goals without the armed threat of force. There's growing awareness in the community and nation that we have given police officers far too broad a mandate and responsibilities, and that using armed officers to perform duties that could be satisfied by unarmed, specialized civilian personnel has contributed to a huge amount of unnecessary suffering and is an ineffective and inefficient use of resources. I urge BART to look to other agencies nationally and internationally for how we might maximally make use of civilian personnel for policy enforcement particularly for questions of fair evasion and so-called quality of life questions that have such clear alternatives in the transit world. Thank you. I emailed this comment as well, but this statement should supersede that. Thank you. Um, and on that note, we received some written comments today that have been forwarded to the board. They'll be posted on, um, on the website. Um, all right, the next person that I see on my list is area code 714. In the last four digits are five five seven nine. Seven one four. Go ahead. Five five seven nine. I see that you've unmuted yourself, but we can't hear you. Five five seven nine. You're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Hello? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Go I ahead. had my local mute on. No problem. Uh, hi, my name is Peter, and I live in District 9. And on the discussion earlier of whether or not to say murder, let's be clear, this is about presumption of innocence. Every person killed by cops was innocent. Every single one. Whatever the police or media may accuse that person of after their death, that person was innocent because they had not been proven guilty. And a prior conviction doesn't count. Prior guilt doesn't carry forward to future encounters. In that moment of an encounter with a cop, they are at the very start of the criminal justice process. They are, at that moment, innocent. So we're talking about police killing innocent people. We're talking about police taking on the roles of judge, jury, and executioner. You can have an opinion on the death penalty, but it doesn't become relevant until the end of the criminal justice process. A person killed by a cop hasn't been sentenced by that process. They've been sentenced by one cop and any cops who stand around and watch. As another commenter said, if you aren't on the jury, you can fairly describe a cop unilaterally depriving an innocent person of due process and killing that innocent person on the spot as a murder. Lastly, BART does not need a police department. Every area served by BART already has a police department that BART can call upon for life-threatening emergencies. Please abolish the BART PD. Thank you. Thank you for that public comment. Um, the next caller is area code 716. And the last three digits are 1533. 1533, 716. Um, you can press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead. That's just me. This is Jenna. That's just me. I'm still online. Oh, thing, so. Thank you. All I'll say is like, I've been, I've been listening to every single comment. And if you're still online, thank you so much for calling in. That's all I got. Thank you. All right. The next person on the list is area code 732. And the last uh, four digits are 6488. 6488. Go ahead. 
Hi, um, my name is Anna, and um, I used to live in San Francisco and ride the BART all the time, and now I live in Emeryville. And of course, before the coronavirus uh, hit, I would ride the BART all the time. And as a white woman, I can tell you that I don't really see what the BART police do other than just harass people without cause. Um, I myself was in an encounter at West Oakland Station, which is in my home station, where the police were right there and they didn't do anything. Um, so based on the comments before and what I've been hearing here, it seems like their only function is to threaten people, harass people, and kill people, uh, which I don't want my taxes going to, and I certainly don't want to pay BART for that. Um, I think the BART police should be defunded. Based on Mr. Bruno's comments and Director Allen's comments in the previous meeting of the uh, BART Board of Directors, I'm becoming very convinced that the BART police cannot be reformed their own representative on this board comes in with racist excuses and uh, refuses to acknowledge that what happened to George Floyd was murder. Uh, it makes me wonder what he thinks about the murders that happened uh, on the BART, really. Uh, so because I believe they cannot be reformed, I believe the money should not be going to the BART police. Use that money to make the BART free, improve the BART's function, add more stations, or take that money and give it to the communities that are being traumatized and underserved because we're spending all this money essentially enabling a terrorist force. Thank you. I yield my time. Thank you for that public comment. All right. We have another one for area code 925-2780. 2780, please unmute yourself if you want to make a comment. Star six. Nine two five two seven eight zero. Press star six to unmute yourself. Um, okay, we don't have one from them. Um, there's a new number that came up. Uh, area code five one eight. Uh, last four digits are five seven nine three. Five seven nine three. Area code five one eight. If you want to make a public comment, pre please press star six. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm a San Francisco resident and BART writer, and I am commenting to say that I would like to see the BART police defunded and that other agencies and services can better uh, do what they're doing. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, I've been through the list once. We may have had new additions, so I'm just going to open it up. Um, if I haven't called on you or you've recently dialed in, um, can you unmute yourself by by um, by pressing star six, and then we'll go through you. Let's start with area code four one five, and the last this four. Is the, the last four digits are three eight eight nine. Eight Hi, one, that's me. Eight seven. Okay, hold on. We'll get to all of you. Just leave yourselves on okay. mute. Let's start with 3889. Hi, my name is Emma. I'm uh, under normal circumstances. I'm a, a daily BART commuter. Um, I wanted to call in and say that I think uh, the uh, Citizen Review Board exists to uh, place a check on the power of BART police, and it is so clear at this point that the only appropriate check that exists on the power of BART police is for them not to not to exist. I share what everyone else has said. I have never seen a situation in which BART police's presence has made me feel safer. And it's not like I've never been in a scary situation on BART. And the only thing that having an armed cop come onto the train has ever made me do is be terrified for the safety of the other person or even my own. And I, I, I ask that the, the, the board strongly recommend defunding the BART police, which seems like and the, the only thing that could sensibly be done with this money and, and put it put it into things that will actually make the community safe. Um, and I uh, appreciate uh, you hearing me out. Thank you. All right, it looks like um, area code 510, last four digits 817. You're on the line? Yes, I am. Go ahead. This is... This is the Beatrice Tech, uh, uh, part of the Oscar, Justice for Oscar Grant movement, as well as I was part of uh, helping put the 
commission together, along with Minister Sabor and Brother Reggie Lau. We were at all those meetings fighting to get what the board together. And um, also married to Uncle Bobby. So I'm calling in to my, express my um, disdain for the remarks, as well as for Bart, period. Because Bart, when something happens on Bart, they never take responsibility, even though they put out campaigns like they are, the way they treat the Neil Wilson family, deplorable. Uh, Shaleen Tindall's family, deployable. You know, they have to fight for what should already be already taken care of and Bart should take responsible for. So I just wanted to come on and say that. And I also wanted to say that I don't remember, and I do remember us fighting that police should not be on the commission. So now we're going to have to go back and look into that. And uh, I would ask the uh, Commission, if if you know today if that's a fact, because I believe that one of the things was that police officers would not be on the commission. And if I have any time, I'll concede it to Oscar's mother if she's still on. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any other speakers who haven't spoken yet who want to make a public comment? If you're on the line and you want to make a public comment, please dial star six and um, we're ready for you. All right. Hi, my name is Jamie. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Jamie and I am a 15 year resident uh, of San Francisco. Um, I'd just like to echo what a lot of other people are saying here. Where um, at every time in my 15 years of riding the bar, I have not felt safe at any time for myself or the other passengers uh, when BART police are around. I've never seen them do anything helpful for people. They not only, you know, have a history of murdering people, but they also harass people for eating sandwiches. It's like the biggest to the smallest of things that they're, uh, you know, not helping instead of helping for um, I agree with the other callers that we don't need multiple police stations. I'm personally in favor of abolishing all police and putting that money into more useful social safety services. Um, but at the very least, I do think defunding and disbanding the BART police would be the most uh, reasonable and sensical course of action to take. Um, and I'd also just like to say that um, I have you know, uh, to the families of uh, Oscar Grant and Celine Tyndall, uh, I just send prayers out to you. And uh, I'm thankful that you were able to have your voices be heard today. Um, I yield the rest of my time to Oscar Grant's family or Celine Tyndall's family. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to open it up again. Um, if you're on the line and you haven't spoken yet, um, or you've had time seated to you and you want to speak again, please press star six and we'll hear from you. Hi, this is Wanda Johnson again, the mother of Oscar Grant. I have proposed before to be able to go into the BART police station and the foundation do some sensitivity training, some culture training, and some bias training. And I'm still um, offering that same thing because right now it looks like we're not going to um, abolish the police there. So the foundation wants to go in and offer this training because there is too many um, racial discrimination going on with the BART of who they are um, policing, um, and it's mostly men and women of color, and so it has to change. And so the offer to go in and yeah, begin some racism training and some sensitivity training is what we are proposing. 
Okay, thank you. Um, do I have any other public comment? Anybody who hasn't been heard from yet, please press star six. And we'll hear from you. Otherwise, we're going to move to the next agenda item. All right. Um, not hearing any. Um, we're going to move to the next item, which is... Um, proposed um, reforms um, that uh, CRB could develop um, along with input from other um, folks, um, including OIPA. Um, I want to say, since I haven't spoken much yet, um, I want to say a few things, and then I'd like to hear from OIPA and from the chief, um, and after I'd like to hear more from other members. Um, so I think that BART PD has um, made a lot of progress in the collaborative reform process. I'm grateful that it has been um, largely a collaborative and cooperative process since 2009. And I think that um, the department has made lots of improvements over the years and has implemented many of the, many of the um, reforms that are being discussed nationally now as best practices were changed that that thankfully BART made several years ago. Um, my favorite example, as many of you know, is the use of force policy, which we revised um, aggressively in 2017. We were ahead of the curve um, and we saw approximately 30% decrease in the use of force um, in that period uh, afterwards. Um, and it was it was fairly, fairly stark. Um, we have, we so we have, there are achievements here. However, um, we still have so much work to be done. I think that's incredibly clear from the public comment today. I think it's clear from statistics that this board has been aware of for quite a while and, and we need to take accountability for that. Um, one of the things that we changed with the use of force policy is use of force reporting. And um, at the board's request, the BART Police Department provided information about race and age and the use of force. And in 2018, which is the last report that we have available, the department's working on the 2019 report, 60% of all force that was deployed by, deployed by BART police officers was deployed against African Americans. And 50%, 50% of the force that was used by BART police in 2018 um, was directed at black men. Um, according to, you know, the 2018 ridership survey, only 10% of our ridership is African American. So the disparities are very stark. Um, they continue. Um, we saw the same thing uh, earlier this year uh, around um, eating and drinking, right? 80% um, of those citations in the public records request made by the examiner, 80% um, of those citations for for minor quality of life things were directed at African Americans. I'm particularly concerned about young people of color. Um, I think that they are, um, th that the, the burden and the, the cost of, um, of improper policing falls on young people of color. When I was at the Black Lives Matter protest, it was overwhelmingly in San Francisco, my constituents, it was overwhelmingly young people of color. The 2018 use of force report, um, the annual report, uh, shows that over 30% of force used by BART police was directed at people aged 24 or under. Um, that really concerns me. So I am highly receptive to the calls um, that we've heard nationally, locally today um, to limit the scope of policing duties. I think we need to do thoughtfully so, but we need to do so urgently. I think it is ultimately the the responsibility of the board of directors to make these changes, and I'm sure that um, they will look um, in turn to BART PD and to the general manager for assistance. And I think that the the CRB um, it, it's incumbent upon us to elicit these public comments and to lend our own expertise. But I want to make clear for everybody on the phone that we don't have the power to 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 defund or abolish. Um, BART PD. We're an advisory board. Um, a few other things that I think I, I, I want to say are um, 
we have about 400 fare evasion contacts per month. Fare evasion, um, whether you have a $2 or a $5 ticket, is not a law enforcement matter in my perspective. And I think public, public opinion about that has changed. Yes, there are some people who disagree. There's some written comments we received to that effect. To that effect. But I don't think um, my constituents in San Francisco believe that fare evasion is a policing matter. It's not a law enforcement act matter for somebody with a gun, a sworn officer. It's something for, at most, a train conductor. Um, and, and I have real concern and have long had concerns about fare evasion and policing at BART. Um, and, and I'll tell you why. Because this board has repeatedly seen um, disciplinary cases where we receive a complaint of somebody um, that says that they were um, the, the subject of biased policing or discrimination at the at the department. And often we will see the videos and the video will show a police officer stopping a young person of color, a minor, and asking them for a ticket. And the kid, um, it, you know, out of youth, uh, walks away or tries to push past the officer. And the officer then has been trained to, um, to intervene because they feel they've offered, they've issued a lawful order, and if they don't intervene, um, you know, the, the lawlessness will abide. Um, and so they grab that kid, or if the the child runs, you know, they they bring them down. That's a scenario that keeps me up at night, and it's um it's a scenario that killed George Floyd. He died over a twenty dollar counterfeit ticket, um, counterfeit bill, and I don't want um, I don't want somebody, I don't want a single more person, and a single other kid um, to be traumatized um, by use of force or an unnecessary interaction with law enforcement over a fair, over a fair. Um, and I think beyond that, um, what you're hearing from the community today is that it's not enough to simply end police involvement in fair evasion. Um, there's a bigger, a bigger movement at play um, behind Black Lives Matter and behind the protests that we've seen. Um, we need to think about not just um, pulling back on fair evasion, but we need to think about fair forgiveness and fair reductions for people who are poor. The re a quarter of riders on, on a quarter, 25% of our riders fall below the poverty line. And the, the kids of color who are getting stopped and don't have tickets, most of them can't afford it. It's a poverty issue. It's not a policing issue, in my view. Um, I, I agree with other people who've spoken that we need to decriminalize homelessness. This is a major issue for San Francisco, which I represent. Again, it's not a law enforcement issue. Sleeping and eating and drinking on the trains or the platforms is not a law enforcement issue. It's a public health issue. Um, we're entering a, a significant depression, an economic depression at this time. Um, and BART stations and trains offer shelter to people of all races, black men, white runaway kids. These are my constituents um, and we have to stop treating them like the subject of law enforcement. Finally, um, I would also say, that, and, and I would note that um, these types of reforms, which I think it is incumbent for us to develop and, and the board of um, directors to seriously consider and to endorse looking into them, these are types. These types of reforms are, are going to happen. They, they already have support from places like San Francisco, where the mayor, the board of supervisors, the police chief, and even the police officers association all support these types of reforms. So they're going to happen around us, and we need to embrace them. BART has so far has embraced um, reforms, and we and we need to remain um, ahead of the curve. I think. Finally, I would just want to say. Um, I also think we need that, you know, that it, and I agree with um, Janice Lee, what she said, which is um, the policing system and the criminal justice system is a racist system. It's a racist institution. That's not an accusation against individual officers or, or this department specifically. It's a racist institution and a racist society. And our our writers are also racist um, and, and we should acknowledge that. And for a long time, I've been concerned about calls for service from riders against um, for matters that are not police matters at all, whether it's, um, uh, you know, being disruptive. A lot of our riders seem to think that it's a crime to be a person, a young person of color and, and playing loud music on the train. That has got to end. And I would like to see a public service campaign from BART address the ridership about 
um, about to, to end these abusive calls for service against people of color. I also think that oversight should be strengthened. Um, and I want to push the board. I think that this next item, which is an action item, um, I think we should um, I think we should move the ball forward by proposing a number of items that we think um, that the board of directors should endorse and, and embrace um, and offer our assistance in um, addressing these issues. And from my perspective, they would include um, re-examining fare evasion and whether it should be depoliced, um, examining generally uh, the types of crimes that BPD um, charges, um, the vast majority of which are misdemeanor and citations rather than core public safety felonies. Um, I would say that we need to look at homelessness and I support the calls for um, diverting funds to a homeless outreach team um, to address uh, homelessness in our stations. And I also believe that we should strengthen oversight here at BART. Um, BART oversight, civilian independent oversight has been incredibly important. Um, this is a volunteer board. Uh, we have zero staff. We have Mag Tatum from the secretary's office to assist noticing meetings, but we don't have a policy analyst. We don't have an investigator. We don't have a lawyer. Um, we rely on OIPA, and OIPA is a, a great agency, and um, has and I rely on them all the time. But they're a three-person agency, and this is not a volunteer three-person um, undertaking, and it shouldn't be a fraction of a percent of the police department's budget that's spent on oversight. So, um, with that, uh, I'd like to invite. Um, Russell Bloom to make comments if he wants to, and then I'd like to ask the chief to um, speak since he's heard a lot, and then I'd like to open it up to the board. Russell, do you want to speak? Thank you, David. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. I apologize. I am taking this meeting in my car because I have a power outage going on in my house. So I'm a little out of sorts, but thank you, of course, uh, David and, and CRB members for putting together this this opportunity for for us to all listen, um, you know, I absolutely approach the work that we do um, with the recognition that the important work that we do includes listening to the voices of people who are impacted by policing. And so this has been a, a good opportunity for me to do that. Uh, a lot of what you are saying, David, um, if I could just address those sort of big picture reform issues, uh, it's my belief that the country is in a place right now where uh, these conversations are going to be had and they're um, very nuanced and very detailed. Um, I don't think uh, an answer can be as simple as removing or eliminating policing from a community or a district like ours. Um, I think it does warrant conversation to look at whether and how the scope of policing and BART um, may be adjusted, um, but what's, uh, I have to sort of stay in my own lane on this one. Uh, I'm very interested in hearing those conversations, participating in them, um, and learning more about what people want to see in the future. In the meantime, uh, I am committed to continuing to do the work that we do in my agency. Um, and just to remind folks, you know, we do thorough independent investigations of complaints. Those complaints may be regarding any type of allegation. And I do want to elevate that part of the conversation we're hearing nationally um, does uh, talk about the importance of independent oversight and independent investigations. In some of those conversations, the conversations limited to independent investigation of in custody deaths or murders or killings. Um, I really want to point out the importance of the investigations that we do into different types of misconduct allegations, which really help us understand um, whether there are systemic issues, uh, whether there are training issues, whether there are issues with an individual officer's understanding of policy or the law. Um, and so in your capacity as um, police oversight volunteers, uh, I encourage you to, to um, express the need for independent investigations into all types of uh, misconduct. Um, that said, we are positioned to continue to do the work that we're doing. We are um, 
open to having the conversations uh, at every level regarding what policing looks like. Uh, I do want to acknowledge that the general manager, deputy general manager, and, and other uh, executive staff at BART are very engaged, uh, have made a commitment to uh, really rolling up our sleeves and looking at what types of changes or adjustments might be appropriate for the district. But uh, nobody is resting on our laurels. Uh, although I agree that we've done some very important work in the last 10 years, the context in which we've done that work is not one in which most of the nation recognized that there were systemic issues, cultural issues that uh, made it hard to do some of the nuts and bolts work, um, but with um, appropriate collaboration and, and dedication, we've made some great changes. Um, now that the climate has changed, I think it's appropriate for us to have bigger conversations. Uh, and I am really, I want to put out there that I'm interested in hearing more from the unions about whether uh, any kind of adjustment to the scope of policing is something that uh, they would want to see. Uh, if so, why? If not, why not? Uh, I've gone on too long, but uh, I'm also available to answer any questions that anybody might have about the work that we're doing. Um, I want to close by saying that I think the model that uh, we have in place here at BART is among the strongest in the nation. Uh, and I hope that uh, over time, people will look to us to help understand what works, uh, what's effective, and what may need adjusting over time. But that doesn't mean that our model is perfect. Um, and I look forward to uh, any tinkering we can do to improve my performance and the performance of the police department going forward. Thank you all for your time and dedication to this. Thank you, Russell. Um, Chief Alvarez, I want to open the floor for you. I appreciate your patience. Um, obviously, this is a, a public meeting to part for you to hear from the public. So um, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so good evening. So yeah, I'd uh, been listening to a lot of good dialogue, a lot of good comments. Uh, yeah, and I'll be the first to admit, uh, as a chief of police, uh, we're not perfect. Uh, I don't think there's any police department that can make the claim that they're perfect. But I th I'll tell you what we are willing to do, and that's that's listen uh, and continue to improve uh, until we get to that benchmark where we could say that we are perfect. Uh, if and when that day comes, uh, we're going to work. We're going to continue to work. Uh, we're going to listen to our, our writers. We're going to listen to our community. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot of things that I think have to be discussed. Uh, I think we got a good foundation. There's a lot of discussion that still needs to be had uh, with the CRB, with our board of directors, our general manager, uh, deputy general manager, all the way down uh, and through the OIPA and with our unions. But I think right now uh, that discussion is being had. Uh, we're doing a lot of good things to help uh, improve and open ourselves up to those changes uh, with training, with with dialogue, just a lot of different things. And I get it. You know. Uh, I, I'm not I'm not closing my ears to anything that's going on out there. I'm, I'm a I'm a news buff. Uh, I like to stay in tune to what's going on just for for my edification and, and my situational awareness so that I understand and maybe I can learn something from somebody that's doing something good or great that I could bring to the Bar Police Department. Uh, my, my my number one mission is to make this system safe and and, and to do it lawfully uh, and and do it through uh, treating people with respect and dignity. Uh, I, I expect that of myself. I expect that of my officers. And I think that's something that we still got to continue to work on. Uh, but again, I, I think it's all done through discussion uh, with respect for each other's uh, profession, with each other's work. Uh, everybody has uh, a different perspective on how we could do better and how we do policing today uh, in 2020. So, um, you know, I was just as disgusted as anybody else who saw the video of George Floyd. Um, you know, myself and uh, OIPA came out with a statement on the 29th uh, condemning that killing. Uh, it, it wasn't nothing that I think any police department and any officer that puts on this uniform and swears to protect and serve will say, God, I, I, I'm, I'm OK with that. No, that was disgusting to the core. Uh, I will say that here. I've said that before and I will continue to say it. Uh, what happened to George Floyd was disgusting. It should never happen. 
but again, I think right now the main focus for us locally at the BART Police Department is to continue to work and, and continue to put in that effort to continue to make this place better for everybody. So uh, again, I, I applaud the dialogue, everybody's time. Uh, you know, it's, it's two and a half hours worth of, of good information and stuff that, you know, my ears are open to and, uh, you know, I'm open to discussions and making changes. So again, thank you for your time. Thank you, Chief. Um, all right, other members of the board, does anyone want to say something more or react to some of the things that we heard? Aaron? Chair, if I can jump in uh, just briefly, I don't want to uh, take up too, too much time, uh, but I did want to echo your earlier call. Um, around rethinking the way that we police uh, fare evasion specifically. I know that's something that we've had great discussions about on the CRB uh, and about how that's done uh, and what the results of that are, uh, but not just fare evasion, also homelessness. I think that there are ways to rethink our approach uh, that are more holistic, uh, that are less punitive, less forceful, less violent. Uh, that could have a better outcome. Um, so I think on the rethinking side, I, I want to echo those and, and lift them up. I also wanted to uh, just briefly put in uh, one thing that, that sort of sat with me since I joined the board um, is around the discipline schedule uh, for officers who have been found to violate policy. Uh, I may, I'm just saying off my head, so I may not be 100% accurate, but I believe there are 11 steps in that uh, sequential discipline, and that's just too many. Uh, if I'm being detained by BART police, I don't get 11 steps to do it. You know, I get I get one, uh, and I, you know, I'm I'm all about making sure that. Uh, you know, we're not just throwing the baby out with the bathwater, but at the same time, I think one of the things that we've learned uh, over and over through the, the uh, tragic and needless murder of so many uh, unarmed people of color in this country is that uh, there are warning signs many times. There are uh, complaints that have, have been there ahead of time and, and oftentimes uh, it's it's not a surprise that something like this happens. So I want to look more deeply at uh, ways to hold those you know, quote unquote bad apples to account. Uh, you know, if I bite into an apple and it's bad, I don't bite 11 more times wondering if it's really bad. Um, so maybe we can look at that. Thank you. Um, do we have other other members who want to um, comment on what we've heard or how to move forward? Yeah, uh, Pete. Pete, uh, Pete Longmire, go ahead. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Dave, thank you for uh, spearheading, chairing this, uh, this conversation. <clears throat> it's uh, definitely meaningful. Uh, I am not surprised by uh, some of the comments that our callers express. Um, I'm not surprised by some of my um, board uh, colleagues have expressed about, you know, growing up in the South and witnessing the uh, change as uh, going back to 1960. Um, I have to tell you, um, for those who don't know, like some of the callers on the phone, I'm African American. Uh, uh, I didn't grow up with privilege. Um, I've had my, you know, fair share of interaction with law enforcement as, as a young guy. Um, I, you know, have over 21 years of law enforcement experience as an officer. Um, I've investigated um, law enforcement agencies um, as a private investigator. Um, I, I have a political background, and I know that law enforcement has come a long way. There has been some gains. Um, but as we know, over the years, especially people of color, we really don't see the gains the same way that uh, people of non-color, white people, see the change. We see it in a whole different way. 
unless you're on the other side of the badge and have an interaction with a law enforcement officer who does not know that you're a former law enforcement officer, you know, you get treated a particular way and it doesn't feel good. And so <clears throat> seeing what's happening across the nation, seeing what's happening right here in our own, you know, backyard, it's extremely painful. It's extremely scary. Anytime that I have to sit down with one of my 17 grandchildren and have a conversation with them as to not as to how to not get shot by law enforcement that's very painful it's very scary me at going on 64 years old when i get in my car and i drive and there's a law enforcement officer behind me i shouldn't be concerned i shouldn't be afraid but yet i feel like i am when I get stopped and have a conversation, I get nervous. Why do I get nervous? I mean, I probably have more time on, in law enforcement than you know some of these youngsters have been living. So I really shouldn't be afraid. So we have, we have a lot to do. We have to listen. We have to change. We can't get caught up in the minutia of long and years of conversations to make these changes. These things are happening now. And whatever we can do as a as an advisory board, you know, I'm all in for it. And what I want to really say is that things are continuing to happen. I am I am even more disappointed with in light of all the shootings that are going on. These shootings are still continuing. So law enforcement, some people in law enforcement aren't getting the message. Uh, I think one of the callers say, uh, Miss Miss Johnson, she was talking about offering uh, training to, you know, um, BART Police Department. Mm -hmm. So I'm a person of training. I don't believe that we can ever get enough training, but changes have to be made. They have to be made now. The shooting has to stop. The disrespect of people who are less fortunate, that are not privileged, has to stop. Uh, and we need to figure this out at a very quick pace, or I think uh, nothing good could ever come in this conversation. So um, I've spoken to the chief, our bar chief. Um, I believe that he's sincere. I would like to see uh, Bart to continue to be ahead of the curve. I would like to see that the officers are held more accountable because that's, that's what they signed up for. Um, the job is not easy. It's never going to be easy. And in today's times, um, there is there is a tightrope. There is a tightrope that has to be walked. And those officers who resign out of protest, I'd say farewell, good riddance, because there's other youngsters that are coming in behind them that understand that came from the community that will do the job that get it the job of law enforcement isn't to shoot first and ask questions later you win some and you lose some but what happened on friday night was absolutely appalling what happened to uh, mr floyd absolutely appalling and it's very painful to watch so just like uh, uh fellow board member white was saying um it's it's very scary. It's very, very painful. And um, he's very outspoken about it. I concur with him, you know, 100%, um, both of the whites. And I want to thank those who have not experienced these type of things that black people and people of color have experienced, that their eyes are open, that they're listening, and that they're willing to get involved because, in my mind, that's what it's going to take to make systemic changes and to teach people and to weed out the bad ones and keep the ones that, that are the officers that are behind more trained and better informed and more sensitive. So thank you, Mr. Chair, for giving me a, a little, a little soapbox there. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Um, William White, did you want to comment? William White, you're uh, muted. There you go. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me now? 
yes yes okay great um i like to just uh uh finish by saying you know i've been doing police oversight since 1996 and it it never amazes me that knowing the problems within the uh, uh, policing system, uh, it always takes a tragedy such as this to get the public riled up enough to come to, um, to, to, come to us and voice their concerns. I just wanna put it out there that again, I've been doing this since, since 1996. I represent District 3, Rebecca Salt, district. I am here for you guys. I want to hear from you guys, not after a situation such as, but before to be pro proactive. I want you to go on the website and, and look up my number. My, my email is wcwyte at yahoo.com for those who live in the district three, which is Berkeley, Albany, and some of Richmond. And give me your ideas and so i can bring them into our meetings again i hate to see this type of participation after a tragedy i like to see it before the tragedy a tragedy uh, so we can make the changes before something like this happens again if every single municipality in this great united states has a citizen review board, I'm quite sure it will impact the way policing is done in the United States. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. Um, it's about 10 to seven. The meeting's been going on for almost three hours. Um, I think I'm, I'm glad that we have heard from the public and from uh, members of the board and the board of directors. Um, and in thinking about next steps, um, uh, I, I think that in some respects, in my view, the onus is on the board of directors to express support for these ideas, um, but we should continue to, to carry them forward. Um, so what I would propose to do is um, the board of directors will be meeting on the 25th. I understand they'll be discussing um, this issue and the general manager is working on a, um, and, and the police chief and others are working on a, a resolution or a statement about the situation. And so what I would like to do is um, to signal where CRB is to the board of directors, and then we will reconvene um, uh, shortly, uh, perhaps before our next regular meeting um, to, to talk more about what the next steps are. And so uh, what I would like to do is propose uh, a motion um, that says um, the Citizens Review Board urges the Board of Directors to fundamentally re-examine public safety on the trains, including park approach, fair evasion, to homelessness, to quality of life and minor offenses, um, to bias, the use of force, to achieve racial justice in our system. And we, Chairman, I did not we stand ready to support the board um, in, re in radically re-examining those issues. Um, and I'd like to just make that statement um, to push the board of directors in the direction that I think we've heard from our community and, and the majority of me our members. Mr. Mensinger, do you have a comment? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I wanna thank Uncle Bobby and Wanda Johnson and all the other people that um, were on this uh, talking. And I would like to tell you, we are uh, hearing you a couple of issues I think that our board needs to really look at is the homeless issue. We have one person, Ar Armando Sandoval, that is in charge of one man that's in charge of the San Francisco homeless Bay Area. He, is, he has nobody in the Oakland East Bay Area. I think we should look at uh, Mr. Sandoval and some people for the uh, mentally challenged people 
that we could get him more of the police budget because they're talking about a budget. I think that this could be something that we could really look into since we do have problems with homeless people and home uh, as far as not being understood and as far as being, uh, you know, shot and, and mishandled by the police. So I think we should really look at uh, Mr. Sandoval's department and see if we could put that up. I would like to thank Wanda Johnson for office, uh, offering training for our officers. And I think we should be open to her proposal and look at that uh, uh, from her funding. I think that we do need more and more training uh, from diversity. I need, think we need to look at that. And I invite anybody that from District 6 that wants to talk with me or email me, uh, I'd be more than happy to hear you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mensinger. So um, I hope that you will be voting in favor of my motion. Does anybody else want to speak before I ask for a second? Chair, this, this um, is sorry. Oh. I had a hard time hearing some of the the motion, so I'm hoping that before um, before we get too far, that we'll have a chance to repeat the wording on it. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Mr. Chair, sorry, if there's, district a, two. If, there's a, if there's a chance for the board directors to comment before the vote is taken, I don't know whether board directors are still here. Oh, sorry, this is Janice, please. Hi, Janice. Um, I, we have no problem asking for uh, board directors to, to comment. We do that all the time on, on items, and Director Richard is often commenting, so feel free. Great. I, I'll keep my comments for like 20 seconds. Um, I would strongly encourage the CRB to vote yes on this today. Um, really, we really need CRB to be really diligent and really engaged in this and to really push on BART board. Um, there are so many things coming before our BART board right now, um, obviously with the pandemic, with our decreasing ridership, and for the CRB to be really outspoken. Um, I, as one of the nine, would ask you to move forward with this today and to push us to really think about what really keeps our system safe, what keeps our riders, our employees um, our system running. Um, so please vote yes on this today. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Um, and um, uh, I would invite, uh, I know this issue will be addressed um, at the next board, uh, board of directors meeting. So I'd invite people, um, our public commenters and, and CRB members who care about it to attend that meeting um, for public comment. Um, here's my motion once more, and then I hope I hope ha I have a second. We're we're nearing a, a bare quorum, so um, the Citizen Review Board urges the Board of Directors to fundamentally re-examine public safety, including Bart's approach to fare evasion, homelessness, quality of life, and minor offenses, um, as well as alternative ways to achieve racial justice and fight racism on our system. And we stand ready to support the board in this endeavor. Okay, Ken Liu, District One. I'll second that motion. P Hong Mai, District Two. I, I second a, that motion. Can I make a friendly amendment, Chair? Sure. Make a friendly amendment. Um, let's see. It was, and I want to get the wording right. And I apologize. I don't have your no, phrasing in, in front of me. Uh, you listed fair evasion, homelessness, quality of life, and then you went on. Um, yeah, what did it say? I think it had uh, minor offenses, bias, use of force, and alternative ways to achieve racial justice and fight racism on the system. Got it. Can I, can we just amend that to say including a review of the discipline schedule? Yeah. So if you accept second. the friendly amendment, then uh, it sounded like you had some seconds. I do. Do I have a second? Uh, is that uh, you, Mr. Lou? Yep. Ken Lou, District 1. I'll give a second and accept amendments. Thank you. Um, all right, Mag, let's take a vote. Okay. 
The motion is as stated um, with a friendly amendment from member Armstrong. Member Armstrong? Yes. Member Bruno has left the meeting. Member Gomez has left the meeting. Member Longmire? Yes. Member Lou? Yes. Oh, that's uh, Lou's yes. Okay. Member Mensinger? Yes. Member Perez has left the meeting. Member Riss? Yes. Member Darren White has left the meeting. Member William White? Yes. The motion passes. Great. Um, so I would urge, uh, thank you all for coming together for this meeting. Obviously, it's incredibly important. Um, I'll get to you um, one second, Aaron. Um, and I and I I'm glad that we had um, this important conversation. I regard it as the first of many. Um, I hope the board of directors will take up the mantle of of radically rethinking public safety on the trains. I will be there um, at the next uh, directors meeting. Um, to address the board of directors uh, and Aaron Armstrong. What? Actually, you you got it. Thank you. Great. Um, okay. With that, and we will we will be reconvening the CRB um, following the board of directors meeting to talk about our next steps. Thank you, everybody, um, and have a good night. This thank you, Mr. Everyone. Chair. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Be safe.